Hi there. I thought I'd share with you today one of my favourite engines, or at least an engine I really, really like, and that's the English-made Irvine 25. Now they made three different versions of this, the Mark 1, 2 and 3, and they're all great engines, but I particularly like, I think, probably the the, the Mark II, but also the Mark III, the early Mark III's anyway, are great engines as well. And to be honest, I've got the Mark I in this flying wing, and this flies like a bat out of hell. So, it's a great engine as well. But anyway, we'll take a closer look at these, and I'll show you and talk through the differences between the three different versions, and then I'll tell you in particular why I'm really, really keen on this Mark II um, version. Well, here on my lovely flying wing, we've got an Irvine 25 Mark I. Now, it's got a Dykes piston ring, it's got dual ball bearings, it's got a resin carb, and it's a really great engine that came out in 1982. And this was around for quite a few years, before the Irvine 25 Mark II came out. And here we have the Mark II. And essentially, if I just slide this forward a little bit, essentially the Mark II was more or less identical to the Mark I. And the only difference being that the crankcase intake, the, uh, the spigot on the carb, was larger on the Mark II than it was on the Mark I. And hopefully you can see there's a little bit of a, a size difference there. The size of the spigot was increased by about a one and a half mil. So a small amount, but it would have probably made quite a big difference to the, uh, the air intake. Now, I'm not really sure of when this change took place. It would have been sometime in the in the late 1980s, I think, mid to late 1980s. Now, if I just move the wing out of the way, that is really the only change until slightly later, sort of 89, 1989 time, where they changed the carb to the aluminium CNC black carb, the, the jet stream carb. There's nothing wrong in my mind to these resin carbs maybe they're not as robust, but they still worked really, really well. Now, in the mid-1990s, 1994, 1995, they changed the Irvine 25 Mark II and completely redesigned it to produce a new Mark III Irvine 25. And you can see one here in this new era three. And it was brought out initially in an aluminium, just a plain aluminium finish, just the same as you can see on this uh, Irvine 25 Mark II. But after a few years, around about 2000, 2001, they started producing the red engines. And you can see we have a Mark III Irvine 25 here. And as I said, this is the, uh, the red uh, did I say anodized? It's not anodized. It's I think it's a powder coating. Uh, it, it's quite a brittle coating, and it's it's not something that I particularly like. I, I much prefer the aluminium engines, the aluminium coloured, and like the one in the new era, because they are more uh, more robust as far as the finish is concerned. These are lovely when you get them new, but uh, they do start to look shabby after a while in in my mind. You can see the intake port here is a lot smoother or rounded. It's got Irvine on it, whereas on the on the Mark II and the Mark I it just had the 25. If we turn that over, we had the Irvine name under the exhaust port on the Mark II and the Mark I, whereas we've got the 25 under the exhaust port on that side. So they've just kind of changed around the marking uh, markings on the two. Now as I said, this was a complete redesign, and again, we've got an even bigger spigot on the carb to go uh, into the crankcase to get a lot more air travelling through this engine. And this new redesign will have surely come with a, a, an increase in, um, in brake horsepower, a lot more powerful, so 
maybe a more versatile engine but it did come with a cost these are Irvines here the Mark II and the Mark I as I've said they came in at uh, 255 grams and that's with the exhaust whereas these were almost 100 grams heavier a third heavier being 340 grams so that's quite a weight increase with uh, with this development now with the carbs, uh, sorry, not the carbs, the exhausts, the mufflers, there was also a change from the Irvine, early Irvine straight through design, same with the 40s and the 20s, to the more modern kind of thrown off 45 degree angle uh, design, which is great because it just throws the, the hot gases and the, and the oils further away from your model. Now, the reason that I really like the uh, the Mark II perhaps over any other engine is because of that lightness you've still got a really powerful engine in the Mark II but it is that much lighter at 20 uh, sorry 255 grams as opposed to this 340 and because of that it is absolutely ideal for my flying wings and I love flying uh, my combat wings and this just allows it to balance out really nice and it's still got oodles of power it still flies like a bat out of hell whereas if I was to try and fit this later Mark III engine I would struggle with getting it to balance and the wing would be that much heavier when you've got an 800 gram wing and you're adding an extra 100 grams of engine that's, that's quite significant to my mind and yet I would say that on a small fixed wing plane like on my new era 3 this Mark III is absolutely ideal because it's still a relatively small engine with a huge amount of power now the later of the Mark II's actually started to be produced in ABC and I think that was kind of around the same time that they introduced the aluminium carbs now these later Mark III's were definitely ABC's I'm not sure if any ringed ones were produced or not so I would argue that the Irvine 25 is not only a really well made sturdy engine but powerful and really versatile depending upon your needs whether it's the, the slightly lighter Mark 1, Mark 2 for something like this combat wing or whether it's that really powerful uh, Mark III for a nice small fixed wing plane. So anyway, I think I've said enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Mark II in the test stand and we'll see how it runs. Because this is an engine I've never run, this Mark II that we've been looking at. I picked it up at a really good price and to be honest it's in almost new condition I, I think it's hardly been run so I can't wait to get this in the test stand and see how it performs right well I've got this lovely engine clamped in the test stand and I'm really excited to see how it runs I've got a 9x6 prop so a decent sized prop on it I've got a number 8 OS plug and I'm going to be running it on 12% nitro and 20% oil mix mostly synthetic I think there's about 2% uh, caster in there as well so let's see how it runs this engine is stone cold I've never run it before so we'll see how we get on with it
Well, that ran lovely. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I really enjoy running these little engines. Lots of power, really smooth, a bit nice idle, around 3000 RPM, and a top speed, I think, top uh, full throttle was about 13,500 RPM, which I think is pretty good for this little engine with a 9x6 prop. Took a little bit of tuning, everything was out, the low speed needle, the high speed needle, but once we got there, it was nice and crisp. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this lovely little engine run.